Hello, today is our second day on 9 to graphing simple rational expressions and we're going to focus on our real world application today. So our first question, you and your friends are sponsoring a dinner. The cost of catering the dinner is $9.95 per person plus there's an $18 delivery charge. We want to write a model that gives the average cost per person. So we think about it, if one person is going they have to pay $9.95 for themselves, plus they're the only ones responsible for that $18 delivery charge. If we have two people, we've got $9.95 per person, but then those two people split the $18 delivery charge. And if we have three people, we've got three $9.95 people for the plates, and then those three people are splitting that $18 delivery charge. So we know that the total cost is going to be $9.95 per person plus the $18 delivery charge. But that's the total cost, that's not the average cost. To find the average cost, we have to divide by how many people they're going to be. That's what's going to divide that $18 per person. So I used C and P as my variables. You could use X and Y, you could use A and B. Then P is representing the number of people. And C is representing the average cost. Some people prefer to use variables that are representing the actual thing. Others prefer just to use x and y. Just remember that x is representing the independent variable and y is representing the dependent variable. So when we look at our axes on our graph, p is the x and c is the y. Sketch the graph of the model and use to estimate the number of people needed to lower the cost to $11 per person. So if you don't have your calculator out, go ahead and get it out. We enter our equation in. Don't forget that when you enter the equation in, we have to put those parentheses around the numerator. So we've got 9.95x plus 18, close that parenthesis, divided by x. We always start off with the standard window, zoom 6, and we see this graph right here. We know that we have a hyperbola, so we know that we need to have two sections of it. So I need to find that other section. If the average cost is up at 18, I'm going to change my window. I'm going to make the x max, let's just go 25 and the y max 25. So remember, sometimes it's just kind of a guess and check. All right. So now that we can see both pieces, let's go ahead and sketch our graph. We're going to focus our attention to this part over here. This is what's going to be representing the real world application. Since our x is the number of people, we can't have a negative number of people attending. So we're going to start with the quadrant one. That's representing what's possible, what's realistic in the real world. So we want to sketch the graph, which we did, of the model and use it to estimate the number of people needed to lower the cost to $11. If I am lowering the cost to $11, we want our y value to be $11. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. We can try tracing. So we trace and we keep on going until we find our y to be 11. Oh, our cost is going up, we're going the wrong direction. Keep going, keep going. We're getting closer, getting closer. All right, so we know it's going to be between seven, around 17. Another better way to do this is go to y equals. If we want our cost to be 11, we type 11 into y2, because remember that's going to give us a horizontal line at 11. We graph. 
we go to second trace, we want to find the intersection. First curve, enter, second curve, enter, guess. And we've got that horizontal line right there. That intersection point is at 17.14 comma 11. What that's telling us is it's going to take about 17.14 people. Now we know we can't have, you know, a fraction of a person. So what we're going to do is we're going to say just about 17 people. Now if it said it had to be at least $11 or at most $11, then you'd have to make sure that you're rounding in the right direction. But here we're just going to round down to 17 people. There is another way you could have done this as well. We could have done it algebraically. If our y or our c value is 11, we plug that in for c. 9.95p plus 18 all over p. If we want to solve this, we make that into a fraction. We cross multiply to get 11p is equal to 9.95p plus 18. Move that 995 over to the left by subtracting. We're left with 1.05p is equal to 18. Divide by 1.05 and we get a p is about 17.14 which is exactly what we found when we traced and exactly what we found when we found our intersection point. So a bunch of different ways that you can go about solving that. Part C, describe what happens to the average cost per person as the number increases. So we're saying as we have, when we have one person, we know they're paying that whole $18 charge by themselves, as we have more people, the average cost per person is going down, 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 but it's going to approach the value of 995. It's never going to get below 995. It's never going to get to zero because every person has to pay that 995 for their plate for dinner. What we're splitting up is that $18 service charge. If I have a thousand people, they're not even paying a penny a piece for that $18 service charge, but they're still having to pay that $9.95 for their meal. So the more people, the average price goes down. But the most important part is noticing that it approaches nine ninety five per person but never reaches. That's that asymptote. 